Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It's uh, the top of uh, Esmeralda, Centro Comercial Esmeralda. And I'm here with a, a friend of mine today, Paul Webb, or Webby as we call him here in Tenerife. And uh, he's got a few stories he wants to tell us. So let's go ahead and go straight over to Webby, Reese. Hey, Webby. Afternoon, Timothy. How are you, sir? Absolutely superb. Thank you very much for doing this today. It's Pleasure. Uh, uh, something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and we just haven't managed to get it together, have we? No, you have been after me. I must admit, for a few <laughs> months, and I've, I've always deterred in look around the corner. But uh, it's a bit quiet at the moment, and I know uh, you want to increase your people, but I think I'll probably decrease them today, tell the truth. But uh, I know we're going to have quite a few of my uh, punters and friends uh, watching and listening anyway. Okay, so I cool. thought, why not? You're a nice guy. Let's give, let's give you a bit of help and let's jump you to the next level. Thank you very much, sir. Pleasure. So first of all, what I want to say is we're here on the Central Commercial Esmeralda and uh, it's quite a cloudy day, isn't it really? But it's warm. Yeah, it's probably low 20s, cloudy. I don't think there's going to be much sun about till tomorrow, but mm -hmm. um, it's pleasant, it's pleasant. And what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you maybe four or five questions, but if you go off on a tangent and talk about something, that's quite all right by me. Okay. And uh, if it gets too much or we run out of space, then I'll just let you know. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you know that will happen, that's for sure. Uh -huh. Not a problem, not a problem. Okay, so here we go. So my first question that I really ask anybody is, what did you do before you came to Tenerife and what made you move here? Big question. Of course. Well, the, with the question of your first answer is uh, I was an insurance broker. I was an agent firstly, then became a broker. One of my friends um, set his own business and I joined him and um, was reasonably successful at that. Busy, night times, selling pensions, investments, etc., etc. And then I met my good lady wife, uh, Dawn, in her own coffee shop in Montpellier, Cheltenham, which is a nice posh part of Cheltenham and uh, just fell in love with her, it was as simple as that. And cut long story short, um, after a while we were dating and so on and so forth, she was working hard, I was working hard, and it's like anything, when you have businesses of that nature, you're working 24 seven, whether it's nights or days, then you just wanna try and get away. So we had a discussion and I turned around and I said, come on, let's get away for a bit of sun, what do we do? And in Montpellier, she had a lot of shopkeepers up and around them, the wine bar, a lot of bars, etc., etc. And she had an estate agent, a travel agent, sorry. So we went to travel agent and said, listen, in the winter, want a bit of sun, recommend. And they recommended Tenerife in the Canaries. That'll do, book it, end of. So I think it was October, the October, October then we booked it for um, December the 26th. Flew over here for that particular week, went to um, Silencio with our son Matthew, who was three and a half, four years of age then, and never been here before. Weather was lovely, caught a bus into Los Cristianos every day, and just fell in love with the place. Didn't even know San Eugenio, Fanny Bay even existed. And it probably didn't to a certain extent then. Um, had the week, went back home, and it was a ritual every Friday night we would go to the Shazan. Indian restaurant, which is on the corner of Montpellier. And uh, I sat there one night and I said to the Friday after, I says, do you know something? I like that place. I want to live there. She went, you what? I says, I want to live there. And that was it. Uh, that was sort of January. In May, we booked up for two weeks. A good friend of mine had timeshare, Holly, Hollywood Mirage. Stayed there for two weeks. Met some very, very good friends there. Joe and Dave. And um, then what we did there, we went around and looked at a few bars. Thought, I have a pub, I've got the talk, I've got the chat, she's the cook, um, a good combination. So from there, the first day, and Dawn says, come on, Webby, go and do it yourself. You know what you want. So next day and next day, I did it myself. Looked at a fair few, and I whittled it down to two. And it was, one was called The Thirsty Beggar, up by um, the, the, the park, the water park. And the other one was called The Plough in Torviscus. Both good businesses. And uh, I looked at it and I thought, The Plough. But I remember when I was a child in Gloucester, which is what I originate from, um, my mum and dad took me to The Plough. That was my first pub ever went to in my life. And I was the only child, so you go in this, you're on the swings, back of the pub, as you know. Chris, bot uh, bottle of pop, you could say a bottle of beer then. And, um, and I thought, it had to be, didn't it? 
and went back, estate agent, bosh, 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 and uh, we bought the plough. And luckily the plough was in Torvis, just in a very, very good position. Don't forget, like most of us have worked in a pub before, just behind the bar or could pull in talking, what have you. So that went from there. And then what happened was we had the market above us and that was every Thursday. And we bought, I think we emigrated in 1994 in June. One month later, we opened up July the 14th. We had the market on a Saturday as well. So here's the bar, the market's above. Thursday and Saturday, thousands of people. Phenomenal. And that was it, that's what made it. And uh, we had a great time, three and a half years we had that. And we worked and worked, and I mean worked. I had blisters on my feet. We uh, didn't know the area, didn't know the people, didn't know the language, and you just do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you talk to people in one of you. And I remember, remember it now, and we grafted and grafted and grafted. And then we, ha we only rented for a while before we thought we would buy to just think, are we going to stay here? Mm -hmm. So we had a place in Marina Primavera. We went out to the golf, to Pebble Beach, um, Amarillo Golf, all those sort of places. And then uh, after three and a half years, we thought we'll buy something. So in between that, we sold the bar three and a half years later. But in the bar, made some lovely friends. As you can probably see from my uh, T-shirt, I'm a massive Coventry City fan, 53 years. I mean, don't ask me there because that's another story that we can do again. Uh, they are my love. Gloucester Rugby, Coventry City, I fight for them. So, and I remember um, I had Frank Worthington in the bar for four hours. And a lucky Frank at 72 years of age. He passed away last week all over the newspapers. Long story, but had him in the bar four hours. Super, what a character. Leicester, Birmingham, the business, a ladies man. And then I also had Coventry City Football Club in my pub, Dion Dublin, that's a man. With David Boost, who broke his leg against Man United many, many years ago, he's become my good friend. Because Ron Atkinson, who used to manage Coventry City, what happened there was he has a place in um, La Caleta. And Gordon Strachan was his number two then. Then what happened then, I found them. They stayed in a couple of hotels in, the, in town. I went and found them, brought them, and they were here for three or four days, and them every day. Absolutely phenomenal. And obviously, Dion Dublin now is homes under the hammer, and a, and a great show host he is, that's for sure. So we had that for three and a half years, kept in touch with them. I used to go back to Coventry, make a phone call. Yeah, Webb is coming to Highfield Road, tickets there available, Kevin Richardson, etc., etc. all of them. Absolutely loved it, and I always do. Um, Sold that pub three and a half years. Our little boy Matthew, who, um, well, he was just over four then when we brought him out, started his Cheltenham school for two or three months, took him out of school, so it was so difficult for him. And he used to dance to Michael Jackson in the bar. Magic he was, ground with a hat after, taking the pennies off the punters and super, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and, we, and then we did that. I always said that when we sold the pub, I promised to take him to Disneyland, which we did. Went back home to England, went to mum and dad, stayed there, went to Disney for three weeks, and I think I loved it more than him. Absolutely phenomenal. Came back, and I thought, what am I going to do now? I thought, I'll get another little pub. And there was a little pub up at San Genio Alto, and um, called, the, I'm trying to think what it was called, I'll think of it in a minute. Anyway, friends who had it left, and they went back home to England. So I had to get the paperwork signed from them so I could have the pub of the lease for free. So I got in touch, made a couple of phone calls, they sent the paperwork back, got it for nothing, opened it up something like April, May, and had it for nine months, and sold it to um, a jewelry, jewelry taxi driver, lovely, lovely guy, uh, but he was never gonna make it. He was never gonna make it. Um, opened up for nine months, had a nice little earner, did really, really well, and that was that in that pub. Then we sold that, and then what we did, uh, had a few more months off, just enjoyed ourselves, etc., etc. And then what happened, I think then from there, we bought another pub for our sins. We bought the Garden Bar. Garden Bar and Found Your Bane, took a lease out on that, a five-year lease, then renewed it, another five-year lease. We had that for 10 years, and that was another fantastic pub, really, really was. 
had some nice people in there. I've never met so many nice people in all our life. Um, Dawn's in the kitchen, top, top woman, does the food, everything to die for. I'm at the front, jokes, chatting, bosh, as you do. And, um, and I remember that 10 years. I mean, again, we had Paul Scholes of Man United through a friend of mine brought him in on a Saturday afternoon. Um, they played Everton and he came in at 12.30 for three hours. We had uh, Bobby Lennox, Celtic, ex-Lisbon Lion, Magic. We also had Andy Sugden of Emmerdale. I've got all these notes down here, I'm not even looking at them. But as <laughs> you know, I can just chat and chat forever. Andy Sugden, that is, um, who obviously won, uh, what was the Dancing on Ice, didn't he? Well, the Dancing on Ice, the okay. Emmerdale. I had quite a few of the Emmerdale crew. They stayed upstairs in, um, in the apartments above the, above the garden bar. And it was his stag do. Had him for three days, all day, every day. Fantastic. Lovely guys, as it was. And that's that, really. In about five and a half years ago, we sold that and we retired. In between that, probably 15 years ago, I worked on the radio. I was called Webby the Sportsmaster. And I was lucky to interview Gordon Strachan. I interviewed him on the day before he was sent up to manager. And he never told me. Lovely, lovely guy. My favourite guy. And Dion Dunham is my second favourite. And I've also been lucky to interview uh, Chris Kamara, obviously with Sky Sports, mm -hmm. etc. We had various Sky Sports dudes um, in Lacka Letter, and I interviewed him twice, picked him up, took him to the station, food, drink, great laugh, and he is what he is, exactly the same on TV. Uh, his wife called Anne, two boys, footballers and one of you, lovely, absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, any, is there any questions? You, I'm, I'm, I've rubbed on for about 15 minutes. Is there any questions well, you want? The first question was like, you know, what did you do before and what did you do here? And I think that's perfectly answered <laughs> it. But uh, I forgot to press record, I'm afraid. What day is it? Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. being recorded today on April the 1st, 2021. <laughs> that sounds about, yeah, but it's only up until 12 o'clock. It, it? You know I mean, I mean? it is 12 o'clock in America. Yeah, so there you go. yeah, yeah. There yeah, you yeah. Go. No, that was great. I mean, um, to me, you're, w the way that you came over, I don't think you could do that these days, could you? I mean, just taking, no. a, taking a punt, really, weren't no, you? No, no, taking a punt. We were very, very lucky. We, we made our own luck. Um, there's a lot of people over here in television, you know, many, many, many years ago, uh, that got ripped off. Um, they bought pubs and bars. They thought they can just sit this side of the bar, work it, and 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 let people, staff, you can't do that. You got to work it and work it and work it on your own. And you got yes, that's where you made your money. Yeah. And we worked really, really hard, um, and we grafted, and we bought a house. Bought a house 21, 22 years ago, 24 probably now, mm -hmm. in Kalosovaki, and bought an apartment. Uh, just, just through, just through sheer work, mm -hmm. really, really, you know, just sheer work. So, um, one of the questions I do ask, and it probably doesn't affect you that much because you'd already retired by then, I think, was did the lockdown or the, you know, the the COVID situation, did it affect your family or your, or anything in another way? I know I know uh, Matthew's working at the moment, or not as the case may be. Well, of course. Well, Matthew, as our son who we brought him over, he's 32 now, has uh, grown up very, very quickly. Matthew is a head barman over in the Pearly Gree Hotel. Which is actually right behind Which is you. right behind us where you're looking at. View, yeah. And again... Talked to him all I know, and his mother, and he's a very, very good pub lad. And again, he's he's very similar to me. Got plenty of gift, and lovely with the customers, which is uh, which will outperform anybody else. So yeah, he's a lovely, lovely boy. I also have also I have got two of the children back home, Kerry and Lee, who have made me very proud. My uh, my daughter is 36, my son's 34, and I have three grandchildren. Kerry gave me Sienna Lee. Uh, 10 years ago and it makes me a bit weak because I've got two more grandchildren that were born last year. Oh, uh, Luca Rubin. Yeah, Luca Rubin was born on uh, May the 21st um, for Kerry mm -hmm. and he is an absolute darling and I've got Ava Grace through Lee and his wife um, Natalie uh, which is Ava Grace which she was born on July the 24th and I've not been able to see them yet and I won't go over until I know that everything is fine, 100%, just to be on the safe side. Right. But apart from that, COVID over us because we've retired, it's not been a problem. Um, I like my horse racing, as you know. I'm a bit of a gambler. I love me GGs, love me football. I'm a sport fanatic. You know, my other 
love the St. Helens Rugby League. Gloucester Rugby is where I'm born and bred. And I've always supported Celtic in East Fife for my sins. Never seen them play. It's just, it is what it is. But Coventry is my big love. That's that's my big boys in Gloucester Rugby. So um, when I see them on telly, I do, um, yeah, I have their little tear and shout them on. And as a sort of a pub, uh, as a landlord in Tenerife that yeah. you've been for quite a while, yeah. is there any tips you could give anybody who's thinking about doing it now? <sighs> the trouble is at the moment, obviously, with the lockdown, we're hoping, as you and I know, we're on it every day. Friends checking me, um, have you had the vaccination? Have you done this? And what's happening in Tenerife? Because obviously you've got Spain. Obviously, Canaries come into Spain, but we all have our different municipalities, so they can do different restrictions with the curfew is 10 o'clock mm. till six in the morning. You're only allowed four people outside on the table. Mm. We have to wear a mask all the time as they don't back in England. Um, and for people to come in by a pub at this moment in time, yes and no. Yes, if we're 100%, we think that the lockdown will go away, which I'm sure it will in time, because we're talking over 30 million people, as you know, have had the vaccination back in England, and Boris has done an absolute phenomenal job. Over here, it's a little bit slower, so we're waiting. I'm still waiting for my vaccination. I got a, I got a, I got a thing yesterday to say I go on Saturday, uh, Super, Friday. Fantastic. I've had one, one or two friends. What they did, they did the people of 80 and above, plus teachers or mm. high-profile people that needed it, in guest in um, nursing homes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, and they've said then uh, with the, the other vaccination for the 60 to 65, which is my bracket, I'm waiting. I know uh, we've had Mary from the Monte Cristo, which we mm -hmm. frequent in. Um, she had it last week. Other pal Dave in town, he had his last Thursday. So it started to come slowly but surely. Well, I'm 60, but I'm a I'm a carer for Christina, so that's yeah. probably why I got it earlier. That's why you would have, yeah. And she um, got she had a second one yesterday. Fantastic. That's good news. Um, so under that situation, to, as you're going back to the question with, would would you advise anybody to buy a pub? Yes and no. Yes, if they've got cash and they can buy one freehold and you haven't got to pay a lease, or if you buy a leasehold and you deal with the, the freeholder and say, listen, you can pay half the lease now, but it's only locals that are here. Mm -hmm. And you've also got Lithuanians, French, future, one or two other countries, but then they're, they're not... It's not in their DNA mm. to come into the pubs. The, D the Brits, the Scottish, the English, the Welsh, Irish, it's in our DNA to have a holiday and to frequent the pubs. You know, you know that's the ones that spend the money. So you want a British pub in a sense. Uh, the, the two pubs, as you know, that we frequent, I did the Three Horseshoes, which for the football, which is a cracking pub in, in Kalasovaki, and the one on, the other one is the Monte Cristo, which um, Dave and Gilly, I know you've interviewed before, um, I frequent all the time and what have you uh for great value for money and it's all the mature people that are retired here and we can have a laugh we have a talk we have a bit of fun etc etc um but to buy the pub it's, it's, it's a tough one I'm, we came here um on a lucky time if we came 10 years prior to that we'd even be looking at mm. because obviously the timeshare was about and there was big money being hurt, etc., etc. So we we just caught the end of it. So we did very, very well in the three pubs, etc., etc. So I can't complain on that. So it's it's a 50-50 question whether you would or whether you're not. If you've got backup and you've got pennies in your pocket and you know, for ex for example, the, the Brits are going to come over in whether July, August, September, and you know you're going to get them in because the bars and restaurants now people who own them free or lease. They're chucking the keys in, yeah, and they can get they could pick them up. That's what I was thinking. Is is there a market yes. today? Yes, there is 100%. I know for a fact somebody sent me one on Flog It last week. I won't mention the name, but there was a, a bar, quite a large one over in Player Parazo. They were wanting just 18 grand for it on a lease, probably a five year lease. Um, I don't know what I think, I think it was one and a half grand a month rent, which is good, yeah, that's cheap. Mm -hmm. So if you can afford that and you know you've got a few pennies in your back pocket. And in a few months' time, you'll be fine. Do you need when... contacts here to do that? I mean, do you need Spanish? Do you need contacts? You don't always need the Spanish. I mean, I, I only speak a little bit of Spanish. Matthew went to Spanish school to Fania Bay. Then we put him to private English school, etc. And he's, and he's, he has a very good vocabulary of Spanish. Um, but we only speak a little bit. But we get by because, it's, because I'm a front man. I'll talk to everybody, you know, and I'm, I can find out, etc., etc. So the answer to that is no. But you just got to have your, your will, you've got to have your, your brain on. And do you need uh, experience in the trade or can you just like come, come willy-nilly? No, you, you, you don't have, it would, it would help. 
it is different from England to Spain pouring a pint. And he said, you know, they're different uh, facilities and they're different where they do, where the cellars are. The cellars in, in England, your pubs are downstairs. We've got back rooms, etc., etc. So the answer is no, uh, not really. But if you're good, you can, you know, you can turn your hand to anything. And most people back home in England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, in the British Islands, then um, they've pulled a point, whether it's their local rugby club, their local football club, or whatever. Cool. And do you want to have a look at your notes to see if you uh, want to make? Yeah, I'll, ju I'll just see if there was. There's a, there's, just have a look. I've put all these the dates there, and I've gone straight past all those. I've mentioned the people I want to, etc., etc. Um, let's have a look. I've mentioned Frank Worthington, uh, the market, etc., etc. There are a few people. I did mention one. There was one or two charities that I like to mention. Sure. When we had the Garden Bar, uh, we did a big charity every year. Um, it was either, uh, let me try to think, try to think it was that. It was either Help the Heroes, mm -hmm. we did for, or we did for the Lions Club. Uh, always raised about 10 grand every year. Obviously, my contacts of horse racing um, and the football situation of shirts and that. And it was always in October, end of October. And we had about 40 from Luton come every year. They all stayed in the apartments above the, the garden bar and they'd come down or spend the money. We had great time, great times, those. And also the charity we've done in um, uh, Monte Cristo this last couple of years uh, with, um, for the cancer fund, mm -hmm. uh, for help for the bus. They used to have a, they have a bus which would go every day, et cetera, et cetera. And I know we raised a few grand for that. And we had Auntie Joshua's glove um, given to us. So one or two other things we've done. We so always, always like to put our bits for charity in the pubs that we've done, etc., etc. So let's just have a look to see who. There's one or two people I do want to mention, and I know they're going to be listening onto your um, your live blog tomorrow. First and foremost, some great friends. Chris and Lynn for Barnsley spoke to her a couple of days ago because she knew I was going to be into it. And she said, when, when, me, when is it when is it coming? So uh, big Chris, lovely, lovely couple. Big Barnsley fan. He's, they're flying at the moment, trying to get in the playoffs. Um, another good friend of mine, Graham Withy from Bristol, ex-Coventry football so, uh, fan and it's Coventry City player. Played for Bath, Cheltenham, uh, Unit, Cardiff City, etc. Top, top man he is. He watches you, obviously, on your uh, on your blog as well, etc. Big shout to Gray. David Lynn, um, uh, big shout to him. Big Coventry fan. David Lynn from Coventry. Uh, PUSB Dave. We've got, um, who else we got? got? Got Kevin and Emma, my bruv. He's not my bruv, but he's like from Yarmouth. Lovely, lovely couple there. Always speak to me every day. Ian from Dunstable. Top, top man, got to mention Ian. Dominic and Alison from Scotland, big Celtic fans. Dave and Jenny from Scotland. Jenny's birthday today. Top bird, beautiful. Happy birthday, um, Jenny. Happy birthday to Jenny. Um, Tony and Hayley, they're from Southend. Uh, he's a big, big, I can't say that word. Uh, big, top, um, big Tottenham fan. I'll keep it from him. That's the ones I want. There's going to be lots I haven't mentioned. I say, oh, you haven't mentioned me. I can't mention them all. We've only got so many, so many hours in a day. Um, well, in the next one, what I'll do is I'll yeah. ask you about specific things that happened in each bar, and you can give us the stories oh, of the bars. Oh, yeah, it's not a problem. Not a problem with that. Cool. I think I've gone through. I think I've, I've mentioned what I want to, and the people I have, etc., etc. And I just want to make sure that um, um, I know when you're putting it out, and then I'll try and get lot of my friends in know that um, that uh, they can come and listen to um, a bit of a blog. I just want to mention my missus, Dawn, top woman, done everything for me. Absolutely fantastic. Where I've been, she's been, and vice versa. And that's it, really, isn't it? Fantastic. And love to your missus, Thank Christy. you very much. I mean, what you do behind the scenes, nobody probably knows. Oh, I mean, no, no, no. I've seen, I've been there, bought the T-shirt, and what you do is fantastic. Thank you very much. Webby, uh, Paul Webb from Gloucester. Bread and born, he says. Bread and born. Yeah, not born and bred. <laughs> As you do. Thank you very, very much for the interview. You're and more than I, welcome. Don't be a stranger. I and won't. we'll see you on the next one. I look forward to it, mate. Top man. Thank you. There's very me much. and there's me art. Top boy. Thank you, Tim. Take care. Okay. So we've got to go and disinfect ourselves now. Uh, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks.